earlier today you talked about the neighborhood symbol. Mm. What are some specific things that you'd like collectively to get back to? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, we've had, uh, I think, a, a drop in our defense. Um, no, it's a priority. Um, you know, part of that is having guys out of the lineup. Uh, you know, we're extremely small right now. and um, But I still think with everything that's gone on, there's been some slippage that we need to address. And having a chance to reset and get back to our principles as things kind of settle down here is important. And then the other part of it is just, you know, incorporating these new guys and finding a rhythm and connectivity with them as quickly as possible. In an ideal world, of course, we're excited to get them going and playing and with their new teammates and everyone kind of getting a feel for one another. You know, that's a process that takes time, but completely understand this, you know, the trade just went through officially, you know, those guys are still coming to grips with everything, trying to get their families situated and all that. So, um, you know, we, we can wait another game. Yeah, we work at it in shoot arounds, uh, work at it in film sessions, uh, you know, it's not, we're not addressing and fixing that tomorrow. It's like over the course of the rest of the season, you know, can we get back to, you know, higher level that we played at earlier? Now, like I said, you know, we want more from everyone and, and we don't make excuses, but we're small right now. So we have to be more uh, in tune with the details. We have to be able to fix problems that uh, you don't necessarily have when you have more length on the floor. And that's just a part of our process right now. But in the big picture, you know, some of those problems will be solved by more length coming back in the lineup. Still have more clarity on whether Joe might be a senior or is that something that's still on? Yeah, no, to be determined, no clarity at this point. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Seth is, is able to, you know, take a lot of the burden off Patty at this point uh, as a shooter to our program, which is great. Uh, a guy that can score uh, spotting up or off the bounce, um, space the floor for his teammates as well. I think there's, uh, you know, there's, there's in general never uh, too many shooters. So uh, that's a positive as well. But yeah, Patty's had tons of responsibility um, in this stretch, especially, well, it's been three months since Joe's been out really. So it's, it's a lot. He's played more than he's probably ever played. I think he's already a couple of weeks ago beat his uh, season three-point shooting uh, numbers. So we've asked a lot of him and, uh, you know, his spirit's unbelievable. But we, we also got to be careful that we don't over overburden him. For sure, for sure. Um, ben does a thousand things on the basketball court. Shooting is not one of them that I'm dying to see. He is an amazing basketball player, and that's without shooting the ball. So, I like to me, there's not really a conversation there, though. Like, if he gets better at shooting, great. But he's an all star basketball player and a, has incredible potential to affect games with all the other things he does. So, you know, that's the, you know, to be honest with you, it's, it's not a huge concern of mine. I want him to get out there and be dynamic, athletic, play make, uh, put pressure on the rim and, and, and defend. And when you add all those things I just set up, it's a pretty good player. You know, we're really excited to have a guy come into our program with all those things. So I'm not worried about what, you know, he struggled with in the past. I'm, I look at all the things that he can help our team with that happen to be things that we're not great at. You know, you know, incredible one on one defender, incredible rebounder and brings pace playmaking to our program and is able to get on the rim. So, you know, for me, that's incredibly exciting for our group. And, uh, you know, whether he improves his shot or not, that's I'm excited about all the things he can do already. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there, there is there is some benefits. You know, you, you we we are in an era where we recognize the low value of mid range shooting, um, but to have you know, multiple elite mid-range shooters, you know, that that allows that part of the floor to open up in a sense for you, which makes defensive schemes even more complicated to trying to fix that puzzle. So, um, you know, we're, we're not directing guys to take a ton of mid-range shots, but fortunately we have guys that if that space is there, they are elite in that, in that mid-range. So um, it, it is another thing to solve for opposing defenses. Good. How are you? Yeah, no, I've never seen this situation. Um, uh, if, I guess we're going back 15 months to my first training camp, and it just seems like we've had a nonstop uh, amount of things uh, that have. Uh, led to a lack of consistency uh, or continuity. Um, so on, on the one hand, not ideal. On the other hand, we're, we're used to, you know, re, you know, being as uh, adaptable as possible. So um, it's not, it's almost like when you don't know any better, it doesn't have as much of an effect on you because we've just had constant change. So we, we, we're not used to having a steady run of, of health. Hopefully that changes in short, in short order here, but uh Kyrie's one of the few guys in, in the world that can fit into almost any any team and uh, and be elite. And so as he continues to work his way back into his top form, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see a better and better Kyrie. But he's one of those guys that just comes out of four or five months off and is is elite already. So um, these are these are part of our, our goal here and our, and our challenge here is to. You know, deal with that. Uh, you know, the, the the newness of this group, and to reset, and to try to form the best possible team and competitive uh, playing style that we can before the playoffs.